Hello and welcome to this special episode of Focus On. I'm Kenneth Igbomo. The spotlight this time is on the 2022 Canex weekend and you may ask, what is Canex all about? Well, let me bring you up to speed. Canex, known as the Creative African Nexus, is a strategic intervention by Afrexin Bank in the creative and cultural industries. The program was launched in 2020 after a careful study of the industry. With a teeming youth population in Africa, Canex aims to structurally transform the continent away from commodities and tap into the talents of Africa's young population from music, movies, and more. President and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Afrexin Bank, Benedict Orama, tells me more. We are a bank uh, that is created to promote trade as one of the key things it's supposed to do. And the trade includes trade in goods and services. And the services sector is one of the dynamic sectors uh, that we have globally. The mission of the bank and in fact the mandate of the bank overall is to diversify Africa's trade away from commodities into more dynamic products, into manufacturing, into services, to diversify our markets, to reduce concentration in a few markets uh, in the 70s and 80s prior to the creation of the bank. The, Afri the African market, export market, and import markets were heavily concentrated uh, towards Europe. Uh, and the, um, some of the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development States. Later, um, China took quite a significant market share. So that, there was, that concentration then included China. So going into the creative and cultural industry is one way we are using to diversify the uh, product mix of our trade. We know now that in uh, some countries, including Nigeria, maybe even Cote d'Ivoire, you will see that the exports of, from the creative industry actually exceed the exports from commodities over a very short period that we, people are today paying attention to it. If you go to the economies that have done so well, you see that the creative industry uh, constitutes a sector that has helped them to do well. If you look at South Korea today, recent years of paying attention to the creative industry has seen a significant boost to that sector increasingly threatening the dominance of its manufacturing sector. And the creative industry is where our youth is heavily employed. If we want to make sure that, I, that we leverage the youth bulge to advantage, we want to make sure that the youth bulge doesn't become a youth bomb, we have to pay attention to the creative industry so that we are, we are able to um, give them the capacity, the opportunity to create things, to produce things for themselves and contribute to the economy. And if you follow the, 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 the history of the world and the, the economic history, you will also know the impact that the creative industry has had on the internationalization of products of, say, the United States of America. We didn't just start wearing the denim jeans. Uh, the Levi jeans was there all the while. But it was until it, was, it started being worn in movies that it became internationalized. So the creative industry also helps 
people who help us as Africans and African economies to also project soft power, to also export our culture, to also take narrative, take over the narrative about ourselves the way we want that narrative to be written, not done by others. So that is why our Flexing Bank is paying attention to it. In fulfillment of its mandate, in support of the work we are doing to increase employment, in making sure that we use it to also drive the production of other goods, the export of other goods by um, internationalizing those goods. We believe that the work we are doing in the creative industry will drive the trade sector of many economies. It will also help drive intra-African trade because we are beginning to integrate our content, integrate the actors in the industry, they know themselves and easily we're going to be telling our stories all across Africa. We will consume our own stories first, more than others, before we expect that many more of others around the world can do so. So that is the story and that is why it is very, very important that we support it and that's why we are supporting it. We actually held um, uh, an activity that is akin to this Canex when we hosted the first Inter-African Trade Fair in 2018. We had a creative and cultural industry pillar which um, was activated and it was very successful. We then went on to do a Kenneth weekend in um, Rwanda because we made a decision that we will use Canex weekends as precursors to the main Canex event that normally accompanies our intra-African trade fairs. Because intra-African trade fairs we are supposed to be uh, are, are scheduled to be held every two years. After the first fair in 2018, the next one was supposed to be in 2020 in Rwanda. And that was why we had this, the, the, the first weekend, Canex weekend in Rwanda in 2020. At that time, we, we are not calling it, it wasn't Canex, it, had, it was going by, and <clears throat> we used another name to uh, activate it. However, the COVID-19 came immediately after the, uh, the event we had in Rwanda. So the 2020 trade fair could not hold. As we all know, the COVID-19 COVID continued in 2021. So uh, we were eager to make sure we held the first, the second trade fair. So we then relocated that trade fair to Durban, which already had facilities to host. Uh, don't forget that the COVID-19 pandemic created problems of, for construction and all that due to lockdowns. And the government of Rwanda were building a new, uh, new facilities to host. With those constraints, it was obvious they couldn't finish those facilities. We had to go to where the facilities that could accommodate everybody was. And that was in, in, in Durban. And that was where we then held uh, another kind of big kindness event. It was extremely successful again. Uh, the big stars, big discussions, big initiatives. We decided also at that trade fair that we will hold the third fair in the Côte d'Ivoire. That decision was made following a very competitive bid in which Côte d'Ivoire participated. And the panel of judges had judged Abidjan Côte d'Ivoire to be the winner of the bid to host the 2023 
in the African Trade Fair, which will then be um, also the host for the 2023 Trade Fair Canex event. What that meant is that we, 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 we had to then hold the precursor event, the Canex weekend in Cote d'Ivoire. And that's what we did in the just past three days. And again, it has been extremely successful, fantastic. We had the sons and daughters of Africa's top stars who are here. We have people from the diaspora, from our continent, in music, in film, in art, in poetry, here. We have master classes which have been run not only by, by us, but across um, a range of institutions that have brought masterclasses in all aspects of the creative industry. We've discussed financing, we've discussed advocacy, we've discussed technology, and all the, the pinpoints that uh, actors and um, in the creative industry, in creative and cultural industry in Africa experience. We've had a tremendous support from the government of Cote d'Ivoire, tremendous support from the African Union Commission. And at the opening ceremony, uh, which was um, uh, graced by the Prime Minister, um, Honorable uh, Patrick Achi of Cote d'Ivoire, we at Flexing Bank made some announcements. We announced the uh, increase in the creative industry facility we earlier launched in 2020 in Kigali from $500 million to $1 billion because that first facility has almost been used up. And we want to maintain the momentum. We've seen the demand that is coming from a cross spectrum of, um, of our youth and all those who are participating in that industry. I also announced the approval by our board of directors that we set up a venture capital fund. A venture capital fund that we believe will support a company we already created called Africa, uh, Canex Creations Incorporated. Canex Creations Incorporated it's a company we created to hold African um, intellectual property rights of African uh, artists and uh, all those who create intellectual property, create goods and services that, um, th that have intellectual property around them. We want this company to help them to negotiate um, the acquisition of those rights, their monetization, compensation when used, and so on and so forth. We want that company to be an agent that will help improve the bargaining power of the producers of content in Africa, whether the contents be goods that are branded, be the music, be the um, games, uh, be the films, whatsoever that this producer has intellectual property, that company is intended to, to, to help make sure that that intellectual property is actually realized, monetized, and become of value to those who produce those content and those who create those property rights. Now, uh, within the activities we held here, as I mentioned earlier, we had a cross spectrum of, of our uh, brothers and sisters from uh, the continent, from outside. Here you had, in the film industry, we have uh, it is Seba who, who featured here. We had Chibamanda Adichie who, um, who spoke 
to our young uh, writers, of musicians, top musicians from all parts of the continent who are here. As I said, we had business people, those who are actively in business, um, who are helping to bring new ideas on how the creative industry can be commercialized, or creative content can be commercialized. They are all here. And we've had very, very insightful conversations. We expect that the activities we held here will form a huge impactful platform that will make the bigger event we are anticipating in November 2023 to be a bank. We are hoping and believe that we have achieved the first goal of our work in introducing the Scanex platform. Now that goal is to create a consciousness in the minds of our people about this platform that is able to unite all of, all of us, all those who are in the creative industry, make it the marketplace of ideas, of products, of vision about the African creative industry. We believe we've created it. Now we have to make sure we go to the next phase. And that next phase is making sure that we help our talent to become even richer from the gift from God. They, they, they have it in their hands, on their heads, and wherever, from what they create. And I assure your present bank will continue in that journey with, with our people. We believe that we've created a movement. You can see it in the faces of all the young people in the halls, in the master classes, in the, um, in, in, the, um, in the floors where they're exhibiting their goods. We cannot let them down. We have to uh, support, not only financially, through advocacy, through capacity building, through advisory services, making sure we give them access to markets, as we have been doing um, in the past few years, where we take the fashion designers to the runways in Portugal, started taking them to Paris, we expect to take them everywhere. London, New York. So that we expose them to markets. We also will take them to the wrong ways in Africa, other places. The wrong ways that are beginning to emerge. So that we create the opportunity for in traffic and trade. We also create the opportunity for them to sell, those who are in fashion to sell abroad. Thank you so much for your time today, sir, and the opportunity to ask these questions. And it's good to see initiatives like Canex being deliberate to expand this sector, that's Africa's creative economy. And I like the work that you're doing to increase Africa's share of the global creative economy. But I'd like to base my question on two key areas, that is Africa's history and culture. Our rich, our rich history and culture holds much promise for commercialization. I'd like to take the example of Egypt. Egypt is doing a fantastic job uh, monetizing its history and culture. And I'd like to understand from you the, in terms of feedback, uh, what you're getting in terms of other political actors and how they, they plan to expand these areas. Well, um, there are, I, I see maybe two or three aspects of your question. Uh, how do we monetize uh, his, our culture, let me put the culture, start first. Uh, the first way is to create a product that can be monetized. In the intangible activities, uh, you know, in the creative industry, you have tangible and intangible. The tangible, uh, I'm sure, is an easier thing to deal with, but it also affects what I'm saying. The tangible, most common will be the, in the fashion industry. Uh, but there are other things 
that that are in the tangible. But the intangible are music, okay, film, now even with digital, you just go watch it. And certain kinds of games that are digital, storytelling, uh, literary, literary work, and even the the tangible that we get an intangible value through through appreciation, the arts, and the you know you appreciate it from the way you see it, the way it comes to you. Uh, apart from that, there's no other use to it. So I will put them, put them as almost in, another intangible part of it. So when you create those kinds of what I call the intangible goods, they can only become an asset if you, they are able to go into uh, an intellectual property right arrangement that is recognized by law. So we have to have the IPs uh, created. We have to have the IPs protected. We have to then have those IPs valued in one way or the other. Then put out to market, commercialized. And when uh, commercialized, we make sure that the producers of those intellectual properties are rewarded in accordance with whatever agreement is reached with those who use them uh, or who purchase them. So it means then that we have to have an IP regime that enables us to do so. That is the only way we can expect to have what you can call a tradable good that you can then monetize. We are really pleased that I think at the AU summit uh, that just completed in Niamey, extraordinary summit, I, um, I, I believe in uh, the protocol on intellectual property rights for the FCFT was approved. So at least within the, uh, in the context of a traffic and trade, it appears that we have a platform to do what I've just said. Internationally, um, there are uh, many countries have intellectual property rights regimes. Uh, they have to protect. We have in Africa, even, um, the, even with the fragmentation. So we have to make sure that somebody who creates a content gets it to become registered as intellectual property. And that's the first step for commercializing. Then you talk about history, yeah. That is where you, where you have historical tourism, that is one way. But beyond historical tourism, you can also tell the story about your history um, as part of that storytelling. People are curious about people are curious about Egypt. So Egypt can produce videos, produce stories, and all that. Apart from people just coming to see what they have. So that is where you have the intersection between tourism and the the, the creative and cultural economy. That's why you have in some countries that they end up with a ministry because uh, these are creative activities that were done by our forefathers or something that people are consuming today. So but then there's no problem or whether it's intellectual property or not because they're physical. The pyramid of Egypt is a pyramid of Egypt. Nobody's going to take it to somewhere else. Uh, but if you start using pyramid of Egypt in a way that you are telling a story about it, you probably need to protect it. Otherwise, I can stay in my room somewhere and create another pyramid of Egypt story uh, and confuse the market. So these are very intricate you know, arrangements that countries have to master. 
Egypt is able to, because Egypt has a long history of tourism. It has a long history of history. <laughs> so they know how to use it. It's a major source of their revenues, major source of their employment. So they pay attention to it. They have trained people very well for it in all aspects. We have to do the same. We have to um, make sure that the things we, uh, we neglect, but that they are of historical significance, that we elevate them to where they should be. Not only to attract tourists, but to use them also to tell the kind of stories that will be fascinating to people, and people listen to them, or buy them, and bring revenues to us. Some of these require uh, government action to go to your third uh, question. In fact, many of what I'm saying, much of what I'm saying, will require deliberate government action to set the pace, to set the stage for the private uh, sector act actors to go in. Is the government that would make sure that the heritage of the country uh, is protected? Is the government that will make sure that they make policies that would direct investment to enhancing the value of the heritage of their country? It is not an, a private person who will do that unless the government sets the stage, the private entity cannot go in. The media is part of the creative industry. They tell stories. That is very important. In fact, the stories you told in the media that have been written in the media or, or broadcast, say, a few years ago, can be extremely valuable creative content. So, in the in, in, under current arrangement, the media can help amplify, for example, what we are doing here. They'll help present a positive image of our continent. Help tell the story that will make investors that can help upgrade our creative and cultural industry to do so. But as they then tell the stories and they do other things, they do the normal course of business. The media creates cre uh, creative content, which can again be monetized. That is why in all the things you do, you say all rights reserved. Otherwise, you will not be reserving any rights. Because you know that whatever you've written, whatever you've broadcast, has to be protected from an intellectual uh, property perspective. Somebody can use it to write music, somebody can use it to write movie, somebody can use it to write a, 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 a collection of books, and it becomes, they become bestsellers. So you want to be sure that if anybody wants to use those, that you are rewarded for having created it in the first place and preserved it in the first place. So the media is part of the creative industry. They help to propagate it, they help to create it, and they will help to protect it.